Well, it's a big one on Saturday as Montana State travels to number seven, Weber State, along with Bobcat Radio Network analyst Jason Alvine. I'm Jay Sanderson. Montana State won a wild one last week against Idaho. It was cold and snowy. The stats were all in Idaho's favor, but somehow the Bobcats were able to pull it off. So, Jason, the question is, how does winning ugly like that prepare Montana State for what ought to be a defensive slugfest this week? Well, I think Idaho's a little bit better offensively than what we've seen from Weber State. Weber State gets a lot of help from their defense, which we'll talk about later, but uh, the way that Montana State was able to win, they hung in there. After the first drive where Idaho went right down the field, they made the defensive adjustments. They were able to do some things on offense. They had a big hitter to Lance McCutcheon, and then you've got number 15 back at quarterback who makes some exciting things happen with his feet. Well, Weber State is maybe the best defensive team in the FCS. They lead the nation in takeaways. They're top 10 in sacks, and they're among the best in third down defense. What has made them so tough on opposing defenses? From what I've seen on film, it's team speed. They've got speed at all levels. They get after the quarterback. They get in the backfield. They've set you up in first and long, second and long. They don't give you those easy down and distances where you can open up your playbook a little bit and have a little fun. Um, so you've got to be ready. First down is going to be critical, I think, this Saturday. Well, Montana State's defense is certainly no slouch, and they'll match up with a Weber State offense that has really battled in some inconsistency, especially at quarterback. So where do you see the Bobcats being able to attack Weber State and get them uncomfortable? Same scenario for Weber State. I just said about Weber State. You've got to win the early downs and distances. You've got to put pressure on the quarterback. They throw for 124 yards a game, give or take, and it's, they don't have a lot of explosive plays. So if, if you're just able to manage, don't get beat on the home run. Josh Davis did hit uh, a 98, 95 yard touchdown run earlier this season. So the explosive plays are where Weber State really gets you. If you can limit those, you'll have a chance punch for punch with them. For Montana State's offense, Troy Anderson had another big day against Idaho. Isaiah Afonso was effective after not practicing at all last week. What do you want to see from the Bobcat offense this week against this potent Weber State defense? Just like against Idaho, you've got to take your shots and you've got to connect on them. I love the fact that Jeff Cho went right back to the deep ball to Lance McCutcheon after they just missed him uh, the play before uh, with it set up the two yard Infante touchdown run. So uh, just having the confidence in Troy, you don't need to sit back there and, and drop back 40 times a game and do, do what you're not used to doing. You just need to complete eight, nine passes of the 15 that you're going to throw and hopefully hit one for a home run. So into the, end of the day, what does Montana State have to do to upset Weber State? One is take care of the ball. 20 turnovers for Weber State forced on the season. They're plus 11. They lead the nation. You don't want to give them a short field. Like I said, their offense only averages 250 yards a game. So it's not like they're going to be a, a team that's going to put up a bunch of points. So. Can this be a 12-6 game, a 12-9 game? Absolutely, and I think Jeff Cho would love it. Well, it's Montana State at number seven. Weaver State on Saturday. We'll be there for all of it, so invite, we invite you to join Jason, Dan Davies, and me all across the Bobcat Sports Network or on the TuneIn app. Our pregame coverage takes the air at 3 o'clock. Kickoff is set for just after 4. With Jason Alvine, I'm Jay Sanderson for MSUBobcats.com.